Your blog started April 2012. That is just a year now. And you have already 800,000 hits. That is unbelievable. How did you manage to achieve that? Um, the first thing I would say is that it's not, when you ask people how, like, it's not some, and nobody has a, this is how I did it. Anybody that says that is only saying it in retrospect after thinking about it and all of that, we sort of stumble through some of these things. But what I, the decision I made when I, you know, was going to write was that the content, I was going to first write what people want to read before I present what I want to write. I started the blog as a tool to promote a book, Golden Sands. But I knew that Golden Sand is more of espionage um, and um, alternate history. Yes. But not very many people want to read that. But you see, many people want to read things that they can relate with. So I wrote what they would like to read and pushed it very hard. Social media helped a lot. It's something I tell writers today. There's, if you're a writer today, especially in Nigeria, where the structures that you know cover publishing, promo, PR are not so there. You have to use um, social media a lot to push your stuff and I think it helped. I discovered that most of your protagonists and uh, most of your characters are female and ladies. How easy is it for you to go into the mind of a lady? Is it that pretty much work? My brother, it is not easy. That's right. the first thing. Women are, you know, there's this joke I see, they, they, there's a book about men, and it is this small. Understanding men is this small. And then there's this other book, Understanding Women, and it is, <laughs> and it's that big. Um, on a serious note, it is a lot of work like, to create a character, make the character not one-dimensional, but have life, have nuances, have, um, you know, things that make a person human. And... When you create somebody that is not of your gender, you actually have to take time to study that gender very well. Your blog, TL Space, uh, from my investigation, is about the biggest literary blog in the country. And um, I want to ask this. Probably you have the key to making more people read because it's a general assumption that people don't read. If you can have so much readers, do you have any uh, opinion for making more people read? I think um, the first thing is that I believe is reduce the effort index that people require to get what they want to read. People want to read. What they want to read, however, is the key. Do we write what they want to read or do we write what we want to write? I, I, I keep going back to that. A lot of writers I have met write what they want to write and in the name of um, literary integrity. Now, I am not saying do not write what you want to write, but couch your message in what people want to read. The truth is, the traditional paperback books and all of that, they still have their place. And I'm, I've published two of them, so they still have their place. But we need to bring the writing to the people today. 80% of the people that read my blog access it from their mobile phones. So we need to make our writing, good writing, available to people on platforms that they are familiar with, that do not require them to leave their very busy schedules to get to. And that's the key. I, for my blog, I post on Monday mornings. And I target when I know people are in transit, so that between the ride, for those that are in buses, or whether in BRT, or that the driver is taking, between the ride from home to work, I post at midnight and then I announce the link around five when I know people are in Lagos and all the missus are leaving home. So that between the time it takes them to leave home and get to work, they will have read it. And then they can still, those that don't read it at that time can still lunch break to quickly read it. You know, that way, deliver it to them in media that they don't have to make an extra effort out of their regular um, schedules to do. After that, people will go out of their way. But the first pool is now way. I want to ask if you have other agenda, what you want to achieve with your writing, maybe political or social, or do you have any such agenda? If, if there's no writer 
that would not have a beyond entertainment value in his writing. There's always something you're trying to say. I, I always um, use Animal Farm as a classical example of this. You can read Animal Farm on different levels, on many levels. You can read it as pure entertainment. You can read it as a commentary on the Russian Revolution. You can read it as a commentary on human nature in general. You know, so it's the same way. With my writing, apart from the entertainment value and the entertainment factor, I also first um, try to address, you see, there are fine lines in relationships with people. Those fine lines are not so easy to see and they're not so easy to define. But the, the impact on our happiness and our well-being in the relationships, on our actions in those relationships are critical. So I try to paint scenarios where people can project into the characters for example, I found that it takes about six episodes to get people to pick which character they identify with. And everybody has one character they pick and they identify with. And once they've latched onto that character, this is the character I love, they begin to see their actions through those, that character's eyes. And they begin to weigh actions in life. That's one of the things I want to achieve. The second thing I try to achieve is, I believe Africa is changing. And um, there are a lot of people in Africa and outside Africa that have a static view of Africa. One of my views, for example, in right right that we just did, the competition, I said, first, 60% of the entries talked about Skype. There are not very many writers that are, you know, up there that write and put Skype in their writing. Those are the views that I want to change. In Africa, there is a shop right. In Africa, uh, you know, right. people propose with diamond rings and not with um, a butter drum today. I mean, that be, those, those are the things that we, uh, I intend to, the views I intend to change. There is this quote thought that says that writers are creators. Some writers believe they are creators, even co-creators with God because so they deal in words. Mm. And you've created a number of characters some that your fans are falling in love with, some that your fans have deep emotions towards. How do you feel about this? Are you scared with the theory that probably you're writing something from the parallel world? Do you believe in this uh, um, mythical stuff of parallel world writing? I know that was your opinion about all this. Um, I think first, I think all the parallel world things are things that we writers create to make people feel that we are mystical, magical beings. <laughs> so you don't believe in it? I, I do not believe in it. I believe that we draw on what we see in this world and I believe we draw on the power of our imagination. But having said that, I get feedback from one of these beauties of blogging and all of that is that I get feedback from my writers, from my readers, sorry, a lot. And some of the feedback has been touching. You know, I write an episode and someone tells me, you know, this is my life right now. This is what I am going through. Wow. Right now. I write an episode and the person remembers when they were in that situation or they tell me that there's a lady that was exactly my, one of my characters in Finding Hobby, Oye Clegg. She, she was chatting her friend and the friend told me what she was saying. You know, she was saying that she was about to lose her mind. She was thinking. And then she read the story and she saw that th 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 there is more to life than this thing I'm about to kill myself about. You know, so th it tells me that there are people out there that when they see those characters, they see themselves, they see their lives in those characters and it helps them to, uh, you know, make some decisions. It helps them, it brings perspective into some things that are going on in their life. And that's something that I just love the characters and want wow. to have fun. There is a belief that is gathering momentum at the moment that Africans are being defined by the outside world and there is a feeling that we need to define our own world. What is your opinion about this? First, I need to say that the, um, one of the things that elucidated that the best was Chimamanda's speech where she talked about the danger of a single story. Oh, yeah. Now, the truth is there is a single story, fine. And the West has their rule. But I am of this 
school of thought again that we have our own and we don't I don't believe in blaming outsiders continually for what we have in our power to change. The first thing we need to tell ourselves is that there was never a great publishing industry in Nigeria. First, if we don't agree, if we don't say that to ourselves, we're not being fruitful. We had great writing, but we didn't have great publishing. Shoyinka was not published by a Nigerian of, um, publisher. Achebe was not published by a Nigerian publisher. Um, Okibo was not published by a Nigerian publisher. Even Palm Wine Drinker was not published by a Nigerian uh, Dio Fagora's book. I researched, I am not certain now, but I saw Nelson Publishers or something. Nelson doesn't sound like a Nigerian publisher to me. Dio Fagora's book was written in Yoruba. What am I saying? Even in that time, we depended on the West to publish us, even though we wrote good stuff. And if you cascade it through the years, you'll see that we have not taken the time to develop our publisher. Now, it is the guys that have the, pub is the publisher that picks the stories they want to publish. And they will pick the stories that suits them. That suits them. So if we want to, we, it's not, the writers have their role to play in creating the stories that, you know, will tell different angles to our African story. But we need publishers that will publish these stories. Otherwise, we will keep taking these stories to these Western publishers that we feel can give us mileage as writers, and they will keep you. See, after Chunga and the, them, their set, the next set was people like Oke Ndibe, um, Paya Sadesome. They all have left these shows. How many of those guys live here right here? They can't. They don't feel that the publishing industry here can give them the potential. So the, 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 the um, the, uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for now? What it seems that uh, writers here look forward to is write a very good book, get it published, win an award, get recognized internationally, and then get whisked away by some university, so abroad. abroad, begin lecturing there, and begin writing there. You see, that's what happened, and it seems like that's the reward escape from this Nigerian publishing industry that will not do you well. And amongst the ones that are in my generation, there are many that are already waiting on the shores of the country that let me just have my break. Now, I do not say they are bad people. I, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not saying what is happening. I'm trying to paint a picture so that we don't have illusions. The thing that needs to happen is to build a proper publishing industry here. In the country. In the country here. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been nice talking to you. It's been very nice talking to you too, sir.